Alright, what's going on everyone? Welcome back. We're going to do some mechanics and materials here. And I've got this axial, axial deformation example by special request. And I've got this rod that's hanging upside down. It's a meter long. It's got this concentrated load of 50 kilonewtons applied to it. And we have a, it has a diameter of 25 millimeters. This rod's made of steel. So I've got a density here of 8,000 kilograms per meter cubed and a modulus of elasticity that's 200 GPA. And what we would like to do is find the elongation of this rod due to the applied load plus its own self-weight. What's going to be the contribution of self-weight? And so, you know, the way that we're going to go about this is, is to, you know, draw this schematic out, figure out what the internal load is or an internal axial force diagram in a way, right? But it's essentially an internal load function, internal axial load function. Then apply our, our basic formula for axial deformation, which I'll show you in a little bit here. But the first thing that we got to do is figure out what this loading is. So uh, besides drawing out a schematic or free body diagram, you want to come up with what the what you got to resolve the loading if you have to. And in this case, we have to. And that's a function of the density and the cross-sectional area. And what that self-weight is going to do is, is cause a uniformly distributed load pointing downwards. Uh, across the length of the pipe, if you will, and so this we'll call this dis, dif, uh, this distributed load W is equal to rho times G times A, and this is going to give me essentially a force per length, force per unit length here, and so this rho is 8,000 kilogram per meter cubed. The gravity 9.81 meters per second squared, and the cross-sectional area of this rod, which has a circular cross section and a diameter of 25 is just pi over 4 times 0 0.025 meters squared and just I just converted the 25 millimeters into units of meters so all my units will work out and I don't have to get all uh, scared if you will and this is going to give me if I plug in and chug some numbers here this is going to give me 38.5 newtons per meter and that's my distributed load. And the way that looks is like this. It's a uniformly distributed load, which means that it's constant. The rate is constant all the way through the length of the circular shaft here. And this right here has a uniform intensity. Everything is just a straight up right uniformly uniform load W equal to 38.5 newtons per meter. All right. Now the next thing that we want to do is calculate or determine what the internal force is. And in order to do that, you got to make a cut. Okay. So here three internal internal loading really. And the only internal loading we have here is an axial internal load. So there's no moments or shears or torsions going on here. So if I make a cut, let's make that cut in green here, over here at some distance x. And I'm going to define x equals 0 at the tip here. And this right here, I'm going to call this x. And the reason I use this point as x equals 0 is so that I don't have to solve for the reactions over here. And so I can just straight up make a cut and use either the top or the bottom, the entire structure above or below the cut here. And I'm going to use the entire structure below the cut. And it's going to look like this here. So here I've got my structure, my cut here. And I'll cut my cut surface. I have my internal force. I'll put that in blue. I'll call this n as a function of x. Wherever we made that cut x, the length of this rod is x here. I have the loading, which is a distributed load here, uniformly distributed axial loading, which we call w, and then a concentrated axial load of p equal to 50 kilonewtons here. And now I'm just going to use equilibrium. I'm going to sum forces in the vertical. I'm going to say that's equal to 0. And that will be n of x minus the force resultant of this distributed load, which is w times x minus p equal to 0. And that tells me that this internal axial force, n sub x, is equal to uh, w times x plus p. P. And in a way, this is an internal force. If I plotted this starting from here to here, I'd have the internal axial force diagram. So hopefully that looks all familiar to you. But once we have that going on, now the next thing that we want to do is, is use this and the and our and our deformation relationship. So here, the axial deformation or the general form of axial deformation. So here I'll put this as four uh, axial deformation calculation. And the thing to remember was that before our axial deformation was 
here delta is equal to the integral from the segment or the length of some internal axial force divided by e a x dx this is my general form of axial deformation due to internal force or internal axial loading here and if I apply this to this over here to this segment I'm gonna if you notice my X my bounds go from 0 to 1 meter for the entire length of the rod and I have a function n of X that doesn't change and so my integral my Delta for the my deformation of this entire rod is from 0 to L L being is going to be 1 meter n of X which is W times X plus P divided by E and my cross-sectional area is constant so I don't have to worry about this function of X so it's just going to be E a you know and that was that pi over 4 D squared times the DX and now I just got to work out some math and integrate this right here I can, I can extract this or pull this out this EA out and so I'll get Delta is 1 over EA times the integral of this WX plus P which is WX squared over 2 plus px and I know I'm gonna evaluate this from 0 to L again if I evaluate this now now this is all just some basic math here I'll get that this deformation 1 over EA is WL squared over 2 plus P times L right here and all of you this should look familiar the PL over EA looks like just axial deformation if we were to neglect the self weight and then here this is the contribution of the self weight right here this WL squared over 2 and so if we plug and chug some numbers let me do that let's see 1 over E was E was 200 GPA so that's gonna be 200 times 10 to the ninth Newtons per meter squared times the area which was pi over 4 times 0 0.025 meters squared all times W which was we found 38.5 newtons per meter the length was 1 meter squared divided by 2 plus 50 kilonewtons which is the same as 50,000 newtons hopefully I'm not gonna run out of space times 1 meter right here Let's make this well, a bracket right there. This 50 kilonewton times one meter, and this should be 50,000 newtons if you want to make sure all your numbers work out right. And this axial deformation is going to be equal to 0 0.000509 meters, which is the same as 0 0.509 millimeters. And if anything, this problem tells us it takes a lot of force to make to deform steel in the axial direction but here it is and hopefully that was useful for you and let me know if you have any questions see ya